uh, this is my first time here, so I'm super happy to be here. Uh, it's a pleasure. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's get into it. Um, I'm Wes. Uh, I work at Square, uh, and we wrote a little uh, little project called uh, Revotati. Um, it was supposed to be open source by today. I didn't have the lovely pleasure of uh, doing a live release, um, but maybe next year. Uh, so uh, we wrote a tool for continuous deployment for Apple software updates. Uh, Graham mentioned when we were talking yesterday at the bar, isn't that just Apple software updates? Um, <laughs> he's not wrong. He's not wrong. Um, but uh, you know, we, we like granularity, the ability to control a few things whenever Apple decides to screw up because they're not perfect. Uh, we'll get into that actually. Uh, so, uh, like most, uh, like most tools and ideas, they all start with a story about probably a problem uh, or something that happens. Uh, you know, the bigger the scar, the better the story, or you know, something like that, right? Um, so uh, this started back in November of uh, 2016. Uh, I was actually at Mike Dodge's birthday party. Was that your birthday party at? Uh, um, oh, yes. Yeah. So uh, Mike Dodge's birthday party, San Francisco. We're playing some like arcade games, having a few beers. He's like, "Hey, did you uh, did you hear about the new vulnerability that was patched in 10.12? Uh, like we're doing a force install for all of our clients to 10.12 uh, in like three days." And I was like, "You're insane!" At uh, 10,000, 15,000 max, or something like that. Um, so I was like, okay, so, uh, went back into the office, uh, the following like Monday or something like that. And I was like, talk to the security team, like, yep, let's do it. So, uh, fast forward to, uh, December 8, 2016. I don't know why we picked that day. Um, we're like, OK, that gives users a few weeks to install it, not like 48 hours or whatever they did at uh, the, the Boys in Blue. Um, I had no recollection of the slides at all. But um, so, so yeah, decided to force, do the force upgrade to Mac OS Sierra. Uh, we did it with our favorite tool, Monkey. Um, who here has never heard of Monkey? <laughs> That's what I thought. Um, so uh, we did it with Monkey. Monkey makes this extremely easy. Uh, it's even now easier, uh, thanks to Monkey 3. I mean, that's like literally hot off the press. Uh, and uh, everything went really well. Uh, went so well that uh, this is kind of what we felt like doing. Um, <laughs> little did we know that that wasn't going to last very long. Uh, a few days later, uh, December 13th, 2016. Can anybody take a guess what happened that day? Other than it was a very sad morning for me. The stopped machine stopped. <laughs> that would have been worse, probably. Um, no, it's, it's actually it's not really that crazy. Um, I mean, Carl the Fog was rolling in that morning. Coffee was being brewed, tasty. San Francisco getting its caffeine kick. Folks are commuting to work. Uh, this is actually like a boosted board with a uh, piece of cardboard on top of it to make it look like a magic carpet. Um, I want one of these. I'm waiting for the Kickstarter. Um, so Mac OS Sierra 10.12.2 came out. That's not a big deal. Um, so Monkey, Monkey's great, right? And it's really great at checking for updates. This is what our, our firewall looks like, firewall traffic looks like on a normal day. Calm, cool, everything's great. Every single time Monkey checks in, if you don't know this, you can set it to check for Apple software updates. Every single one of our machines was either on 10.12 or 10.12.1. So you're looking at about 2,000 machines. That's small compared to some of the folks here. I'm sorry. But for us, it's you know, not too shabby. Um, Monkey started to download it and cache it. And when you have several machines checking in like every minute, 
Uh, you get this snowball effect. And, and things just went out of control. Uh, I got really lucky when I found this, actually. I <laughs> giffied snowball and, uh, oh, wow, I hit the, the trackpad there. That's no bueno. Um, but anywho, uh, things snowballed, and then this became the traffic through the firewall. I, you know, which basically caused it to catch on fire. That's not actually our firewall. Um, <laughs> but uh, so um, y it was really easy to notice that like something like this was happening. I like conference calls that were happening in like the video conference rooms and everything just degraded drastically, fuzzy. You know, they looked like eight bit images. I, you know. Engineers were trying to do git pushes, and it's just hanging, right? Um, and I, I don't know what I was doing. I, I don't really know what I do at work most of the time. Um, but eventually, the network team came over, and they were like, oh, God, make it stop. <laughs> and, and I was like, wait, what? That's like... You know, that shouldn't be a problem, but this was basically my reaction. Um, like, oh, wait, yeah, okay. Um, so they were like, can we fix it? And I was like, yeah, no, that's too late. <laughs> All the machines that are downloading it, there's like no way to stop it. You know, it's, so we, uh, we actually killed um, all traffic to the 17 block. So any traffic that was going to Apple Everything, so you know, iMessages, anything you were doing on your computer that you were doing on the corporate network stopped working. Um, we also uh, we also do a lot with like Apple Pay and some of the developers. <laughs> uh, so it was it was a beautiful beautiful day, and this was like right before lunchtime too. Um, so uh, we hit 99% capacity on the firewall that day. Uh, that, uh, yeah, that's achievement unlocked for sure. Um, I, set, I set the record, clearly. Uh, the average load was about maybe 25 to 30% at peak hours. Um, and they were like, there's no way we can ever go past this. Well, yeah, hire me. Um, but, but caching servers, we had them. We, uh, we started looking at network logs to the caching servers. And there was, uh, there's about, you know, this slide, somebody mentioned that earlier. I think Joel found that out. Uh, there was like zero traffic to the caching servers. And we were like, what in the world is going on? This is, there, there's no possible way. Uh, you know, and so we did some investigation. I did a lot of testing. I, I don't like testing caching servers. It, it drives me nuts. Um, but so we found out uh, if you were to download an app from the Mac App Store, Xcode, it would come through the caching server. If you, would, if you were on 10.11, which none of my machines were, uh, from like 10.11.5 to 10.11.6, it would pull the update from the caching server. Any 10.12 release to 10.12.2, nothing. Just goes straight to Apple and is just like, give me the goods. That's not good. So. We realized we had a problem because the exact same thing, if Apple's history lives up to anything, it's going to happen again in like five to six weeks whenever 10.12.3 comes out. So we were like, okay, well, I don't know, what's our next move? We uh, thought about it. I was just like, okay, well, maybe I can write something to like turn Apple software updates off in Monkey for certain percentages of machines during certain times of the day. And the ideas just kept booming, booming, and they were all terrible. And we're like, OK, somebody solved this problem not too long ago. Uh, you know, it's a software update server. Um, you can say, hey, don't actually install these updates. Um, we looked at doing this before. We had a few problems with it, though. Uh, and we were looking at uh, Reposado. Great. Uh, who here uses Reposado? Anybody? Cool. Somewhat. I, I know like one of the main contributors is in the room. That's nice. Uh, no pressure. Um, 
But uh, so we had some things that we liked, and we had some things we didn't like. Um, for the sake of like time earlier, we only focused on the negative things. Um, but so we really love the fact that uh, you can do granular control of individual updates. It's like super easy to do, command line. Um, and you can make unlimited branches for different groups of machines. And it's Python 2.6, so it pretty much runs on anything. Uh, it's not required to run on a Mac. But we had some problems when we were evaluating it last time uh, that was like it, all of the infrastructure that if we were to deploy Reposado would have been done on uh, our corporate network. And if you left the office and you wanted an Apple software update, it'd be like, no, I can't find the server uh, and you're out of luck. So we would have to put it back to like Apple's production branch whenever you left the office or left the corporate network, sorry. Uh, and then there was also this other problem. The manual promotion bit whenever a new update would come out. Do a repo sync, bring down the latest branch, catalog, and then do the promotion. And yes, I know that that's up there twice. That's because it was twice as bad for us. That I was just like, no, I, I don't, I don't want to do that. Um, and so let's break it down. Infrastructure only on the corporate network. We could have gone the Google route and said, well, we're beyond corp, we're trying for that, but um, that's clearly a different discussion. Um, but uh, in the meantime, like from the last time that we evaluated this, we decided that uh, you know, it, it's time to get with it and uh, to the cloud. So uh, we actually pushed uh, our entire monkey repo uh, to Amazon CloudFront. It's great. Um, it's incredible how fast it is. It's actually faster than our own infrastructure, which I'm not really surprised about because you know they just know how to do that kind of thing. Um, uh, last year, uh, Sam Keeley is even in, in here. Is he already at the pub? Oh God, I'll make it quick. Um, so uh, he did a talk on AWS last year. Uh, highly recommend it. So that solved one problem. It's no longer an issue. Manual promotion. Well, I guess the only way to fix that is some type of automation. So, uh, which, you know, but whenever you have to do something manually, for me, like I'm a pretty easygoing guy, but whenever I have to do something over and over and over and over and over again, and I feel like there's a better way to do it, it drives me absolutely insane. Um, it's almost as bad as wet socks. I don't know if anybody hates wet socks like I do, but wet socks are the worst. Um, but unlike wet socks, you know, we can automate this. Uh, and so we, uh, we figured the only thing we needed to do was move the branch or like move the updates from uh, like solely up a, uh, a list of different branches that represent different portions of our fleet. Uh, and we knew that we, we basically just had to write that piece. And then after that, we could just put it on a, uh, an automated run and then sync it up to CloudFront. I, Jenkins is pretty good at doing that. I, last year, Tim Sutton, who is not here, unfortunately, um, uh, did a great talk on Jenkins. I uh, highly recommend it. So we're like, okay, I guess we can figure this out. So our three warriors, I, if I, I probably should have redone this with uh, some of the, uh, I can't even remember what Frogger's uh, main <laughs> thing was. Um, sorry, spacing on it. Um, but yeah, so this is what, uh, this is what we decided on. Uh, Reposado, Jenkins, CloudFront. Seems very buzzwordy-ish, at least for two of them. I don't know if Reposado is very buzzwordy. Um, but we're like, all right, we can do this. Uh, my team, we, we write a bunch of different tools internally. And we always have this, this debate whenever we come up with a new idea. And we're like, oh, this is going to be awesome. But wait, wait what, do we, what should we call it? It's very important. Um, and we were like, I, 
I don't know. Um, so he came down with a name, Reposado. What's it stand for? Um, so Reposado, tequila. Uh, we wanted to like keep the updates warm. Uh, hot toddy, warm tequila. It's actually a drink, I do believe. Um, but uh, yeah, terrible name. I'm sorry. I, I, we couldn't come up with anything better. Um, but that's that's not really the important part. The important part is how does it work. Uh, so, how but how does it work? So uh, let's say that uh, the the top list minus the cloud is uh, like the different branches that you can have in your environment. So you have like a dev catalog, a testing catalog, and a production catalog uh, for different Apple so Ap Apple software updates. Um, so what RepoTotty does is it'll move any uh, updates that aren't in the production catalog from testing. It's not hard coded to this. You can define what branches you want. Um, and then move anything from dev over to testing. And then it'll do a repo sync with Reposado. Pull down any of the new updates and then move those up your, uh, your list. Um, and it keeps going. So the next run, I think you guys get the picture. I, right? And then you're like, oh, yay, like all the updates are there. So ours got something a little absurd like this. Um, but instead of uh, like two, three, and four, we actually went to 10. Um, to like, so whenever we roll updates out, we can do 10% at a time. Uh, and this, uh, this has actually worked quite well. Uh, we run it on an interval uh, with Jenkins about every two hours. Uh, so if something terrible does happen with an update, uh, worst case, we hit 10% of the fleet before we can turn it off, and that's way better than 100%. Uh, so uh, let's talk a little bit about it. Installation and setup. It's pretty simple. Uh, the only thing it requires is uh, Python 2.6. Uh, just like Reposado, it's made to sit like directly next to it. Uh, it does require Reposado. <laughs> Can't use it without it. Um, so uh, we were supposed to have it open sourced uh, by today. Uh, the main guy on like the open source team at Square uh, never got back to my message um, about like, hey, can we make sure that like this is good to go today? Um, I, I, I think he's probably still sulking over the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins loss like I was yesterday. Um, so, but uh, once it is available, clone the repo. Um, and then you just need to symlink the code directory uh, of Reposado uh, into where Reposado is. And then you just run dash dash configure. Uh, it'll, I thought about like doing that here and then like live demos or even recording it and I was like, eh, too much. Uh, and not, not really a lot of fun because I mean we're probably, I don't even know how much time we've gone through here. Um, but probably after about 10 minutes everyone's just like, okay, is this, can this guy get off the stage anyway? So we'll move it along. Um, so you can figure it. There's a few different options it'll walk you through. The, the, main, the first one is it'll look at Reposado and it will uh, find all the branches that it has. Uh, and then it'll prompt you to arrange them uh, because like the default arrangement probably isn't how you want to actually promote them. Uh, so it'll, so you, after you arrange it and you configure your Reposado, uh, and you just run it. Uh, the basic feature is what I demonstrated earlier, where it just slowly increments, uh, increments it up. So it does one pass through. Um, so if you had five different branches, you would have to run it five times in order to move an update that is new to get it to the last one. Uh, there's also uh, some other options in it. You know, I don't really want to display everything. Uh, but I... Who here has done uh, a force install date for uh, Apple update metadata in Monkey? Okay, so a dozen people. Did you hate doing that? 
So if you, if you have to do it often, uh, it drive, drove us nuts. So um, Repetati loves monkey, um, in which you can do, uh, you can add a dash dash monkey into it. And if any of the new updates that it pulls down from the catalog, uh, if that update requires a restart, uh, it will automatically generate a package info metadata and then uh, import that into the monkey directory that you would like. Uh, you can also pass it uh, dash dash all monkey, which will, uh, it doesn't do a, a sync check, so it doesn't look for any new updates. It just looks at your existing reposado, uh, repo, yeah, reposado. Wow, yeah, that's a little confusing between the two I see now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so it'll look at your entire existing reposado library and any of the updates that require a restart, it will generate a package info for you and import them into Monkey. Uh, and we were also like, okay, this is great. So we can import them into Monkey, but it still hasn't really solved the problem of why we import them in the first place, which is for a uh, force install after date. So uh, during the configure portion of this, you can actually uh, set how many days after a new update becomes available to, um, so for us, four weeks. Four weeks after a new update with a restart becomes available from the Apple catalog, uh, it will set a force install date uh, automatically for four weeks after that. Uh, and this is what uh, Jenkins runs uh, every two hours uh, during normal business hours. Uh, we're not open on uh, nights and weekends. Um, and for a little high-level diagram, uh, so Jenkins, it's a delightful person. Um, it cuts off a little bit on the side. Bummer. Um, so uh, yeah, Jenkins will call Repetati. It's called Reposado. Uh, and then uh, that information Jenkins will take and publish the new uh, freshly built catalogs to CloudFront, to where all of our clients can reach it, whether they're in the office, they're outside. So no matter where you are, your update catalog is always what it should be. And then if there is a new update, uh, you can automatically import it into Monkey. And uh, we finished this, the Monkey bit, uh, right before 10.12.5 came out. And when 10.12.5 came out, I uh, Jenkins will actually file a pull request uh, to my team saying, hey, I just imported something into Monkey. Can you look at it? I've already tested it, but can you look at it and, uh, and then merge it in? And when that happened, like two weeks ago, we were so happy. Uh, and we didn't have to do anything. So I think we're two weeks left or two and a half weeks maybe until uh, everyone has to be on 10.12.5. Uh, um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's it. I, yeah, I don't, I don't really have anything else. Q and A. Questions? Questions? Alistair, it looks like in the, the back row there. Take it easy, buddy. I don't no, wait, statements, no statements, just no. questions. Okay, I don't know. What about um, X-Protect? Uh, information and those kind of, if um, rather just the, the, the from Apple straight, it comes automatically? Uh, no, so uh, all the X protect updates as well as the gatekeeper stuff comes through the normal catalog. Um, you don't actually uh, see those. Um, they have a certain flag uh, in the, uh, like the metadata uh, that says, hey, don't display me with uh, the software update command. Um, uh, Greg wrote a blog post uh, maybe like a year ago, a year and a half ago, um, that explains this. Uh, and uh, he made an option in Repo, uh, Reposado that can like remove that. So then uh, Monkey can install like whenever it does an update check. And uh, Repositio will handle it. It'll, it'll move it up uh, so you can slow roll it if you want. But um, so then that way, Monkey can actually install the XProtect and like the gatekeeper updates, if what I just said makes any sense. So, 
do I still have to ask a question? Can I make a statement about that? No? Okay, I won't. Uh, are you replicating packages? No. So I'm not. you're still leveraging caching server slash Apple when so, needed? So, um, fun bit, we filed uh, a radar that says, hey, caching servers don't work yeah. <laughs> with 1012. Um, uh, they said, hey, we fixed it. And they did in the, um, like the, the seed channel. Um, and then whenever, uh, I think it was 1012, because we filed it, like, uh, and they said it was going to be fixed by 1012.4, I think, um, and it still doesn't work. So, but it works in the seed channel, it just doesn't work in the production channel. Thanks, Apple. Um, so, does that answer your question? Alistair? Yes. Yeah. Really, I can't? So the, you only need to worry about removing the config data to make it visible in Monkey if you've turned schedule off. So uh, if, yes, if, if you've the schedule is on for checking for Apple updates, even though they get offered by Monkey knowing that they're available over there, uh, you still get them in the background yeah. as long as you haven't turned the schedule off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Questions? Jesse, Grub? Victor, wake up. Questions? I mean, let's get Shanna, this, uh, are you going to set this up? Time. No? Okay, thank you. Clap, 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 clap. clap. <laughs>